Using the mole is incredibly important um, for chemistry. Let's go back and do some basic, uh, let's just look at a basic equation. If I've got iron, I can react it with sulfur to give me iron sulfide. So what's that telling you? Well, that's telling you if you've got an atom of iron and you've got an atom of sulfur, say, they join together to give me iron sulfide, like so. So let's say I wanted to do that in the lab. I'd need to take an atom of iron and an atom of sulfur to make one of those. But how on earth am I ever going to be able to measure out an atom of that? Equally, if I wanted to double it, it would be two atoms of iron with two atoms of sulfur, which would give me two of those is going to be impossible. So what we do is we have to work with big numbers of atoms. And it so happens that we can work with a mole. A mole is just a number. If I take 12 grams of carbon, or I take 32 grams of sulfur, both of those contain the same number of atoms in them. Can anybody remember what I call that number? The number is actually six times 10 to the 23. Can you remember it's called Avogadro's constant? Yes. Good. So, it's just a really big number. Where would you find that number? If I said, can you go and weigh out six times 10 to the 23 atoms of carbon, what would you, where would you look to find out how much you need to weigh out? What key, what key tool do we always use? We'd always use the periodic table. And that number is called the relative atomic mass. So the relative atomic mass tells you how much a mole of atoms weighs. Yeah. So you will always look at the periodic table for the relative atomic mass and we can use this in an equation the number of moles that you have is the mass in grams divided by the relative atomic mass that's for atoms um, how would you change that because obviously you, you don't always work with one mole of everything. Sometimes you want to have half a mole of something. How would I change that to work with compounds? What can I do? Because that's fine for, for atoms. I just go and look at the periodic table. How would I work with something like sodium chloride? How would I work at how much a mole of that weighs? Um, yeah, Jasmine. Um, about each mass of each one. Yep, so I, I go to the periodic table and I find that sodium is 23 and chlorine is 35.5. I'd add those two together to give me 58.5. So I would weigh out 58.5 grams of sodium chloride and that would give me a mole. Did you come across the term molar mass? Yes. yes. Oh, good. Molar mass is just the mass you need to weigh out to get a mole of it. So you can simplify or make it a little bit easier for yourself that the number of moles is just the mass in grams divided by its molar mass. Molar mass dead easy, just add everything up in the predict table. Mass is in grams and then you have moles and you can rearrange that to give you mass is equal to moles times molar mass like so. So you need to be able to use those two equations really comfortably. So the first example it wants me to do is to calculate calculate the relative formula mass of oxygen. How would I do that? I need to find out how much, what's the relative formula mass of oxygen what you do. Yeah, so you go to the periodic table, the relative atomic mass of oxygen is 16, 
So what would be the relative formula mass of O2? 32. 32. So the relative formula mass of O2 is, is equal to 16 times 2, which is 32 grams. So often what they'll give you is they'll tell you a compound contains, I don't know, 40 grams of sodium, 60 grams of oxygen. What's its formula? As long as you stick to this basic method, you will be fine and dandy. So let's have a look. What is an empirical formula? An empirical formula is the simplest ratio between the atoms. So let's say I have got ethene which is this guy here. The molecular formula, that's all the atoms in, would be C2H4. Yeah, That's the molecular formula, that's actually what's in it. But the empirical formula is the simplest ratio, which is CH2. So that's the simplest ratio. The first thing you always have to do is work out the empirical formula then they'll sometimes ask you to work out the molecular formula. Um, so that's the difference between a molecular and a, um empirical formula. Let's go through working out an example. So this is all written down for you. So let's say they give you iron chloride, and they tell you that in iron chloride, I've got 6.71 grams of chlorine and 3.53 grams of iron. And they say, what's its formula? Well, easy peasy, separate your two elements out and just write the mass of each underneath. Can I compare mass like that? No. no. Whenever they give you a mass, you always convert it into oh. moles. So how do I convert these into moles? Moles is mass divided by... Mass. Molar mass, we've just done it. The molar mass of iron, if you look at your periodic tables, is 55.8. The molar mass of chlorine is 35.5. If you do that, you get that to be 0.0633. That is 0.189. Okay. Could I have a formula which said iron 0.0633, chlorine 0.189? No. That'd be madness. So what can I do? I need to get rid of this. So I divide through by the smallest one, perfectio, which is 0.0633, 0.0633. That would obviously become one. And if you do that, that becomes 2.99 which is three. So the formula is FeCl3. That's the empirical formula. That's all you can find. Now, what if- Fe in front of CL? I don't get it. Like just the ordering. I don't understand the ordering. You always put the metal first. Okay, so why does it have like two gases? Two. two what, sorry? Two non-metals. Two non-metals. <laughs> Uh, well, it then depends on things, something called electronegativity and, and um, which one's the most metallic. I wouldn't worry too much about that. Okay. So, so it'd be like something like carbon dioxide? Yeah. CO2. It's just um, carbon... Well, if you think, if you want to look at it this way, carbon's more to the left-hand side of the periodic table than oxygen, so if you do it that way, you should be okay. okay. Right, so that's empirical formula. If you wanted to make sure that was the same as the molecular formula, what would you need to know? You'd need to know the molar mass of that. So if they then told you, if they told you the molar mass of the compound is equal to 324.6, how would you convert that into the molecular formula? Well, if you add up iron, which is 55.8 plus 3 chlorines, that comes to 162.3. So iron, so the molar mass of that is 162.3. 
If you take 324.6 divided by 162.3, you get it to be two. So the molecular formula in that case would be Fe2Cl6. You times everything by two. So moles are really important when we come to look at how much is produced or how much we need to react. This equation is telling me if I take one mole of this and react it with three moles of carbon monoxide, I'll make two moles of iron and three moles of carbon dioxide. That's what those big numbers are telling me. What they often ask you is they'll say, well, what mass of iron, so circle, what they're asking you about, is produced when 32,000 grams of iron oxide are reacted. Have they asked me anything about carbon monoxide? No. Nah. Have they asked me anything about carbon dioxide? So don't worry about it, just circle the things that they've told you about. You've just got to follow these three easy, um, easy peasy steps and you will be able to sort these out. The first thing, if they give you a mass in chemistry, you always convert it to moles. So what can I find the moles of? I can find the moles of iron oxide because they've given me the mass of it. Moles of iron oxide is mass over molar mass. The mass is 32,000 grams. The molar mass they've actually told me, but it'd be easy to find out because you just add it all up, is 159.6. If you do that, you get 200.5 moles. Right, this is where the tricky bit comes, but you'd be okay. So that was the first bit. The next bit, I find the moles of iron oxide, but I need to relate that to the moles of iron. For every one of those, I make two of those. So if I've got 200.5 moles of that, how many of those am I gonna make? The way you do it, so moles of iron is equal, you take that number, you divide it by the number in front, which is one, and you times it by the number of the moles you want to find, which is two. That way you always get the ratio right. So divide it by the big number in front of the moles you've just found, times it by the number that you want to find. So that gives you uh, 401 moles. <laughs> are you not happy with that? Yes, we are. You sure? So, this is a little bit confusing. For every one of those, I make two of those. Are you happy I just times that number by two? Because if I have... Will the amount of moles on the left be the same as the amount of moles on the right? No, not necessarily, because the number of moles is just telling you how many discrete atoms rearrange themselves. So they can, I could have, like the example before, if I had iron and iron becoming one of those and one of those, actually joined together to give me one of those. So it doesn't always work out that way. So the key thing, divide it by, that one has come from the one that's in front of those and you've times it by the two there. Always follow that method, you'll get the old things in. Next bit's the easy bit. You found the moles, how can you convert that to a mass of iron? Mass is moles times molar mass. The moles is 401. The molar mass of iron is 55.8. If you do that, you get it to be 22,000. 400 grams, like so.